So I've covered this before, but I've never actually covered it on YouTube. So I figure it's time to, um, it's time to address that. Um, here's the situation. You just track down a rare game. And what's that? The game is horribly yellowed or in otherwise horrible condition. There's a solution. So for context, this is an official cart that was released in China only. It is a four in one cart. It's, it's actually pretty neat. Let's go ahead and pull it apart. Take a look at this thing. Um, not really relevant to the subject matter, but I think it's worthwhile. A lot of people say um, Tetris is the only Game Boy game that has a blob top. The only official Game Boy game that has a blob top, but that's not true. Uh, a lot of the um, Chinese domestic market carts do have blob tops. These 4-in-1 carts are no exception. This is an official cart with a blob top. Uh, but anyway, I got this thing relatively cheap. They're kind of hard to come by being a uh, Chinese market only cart. And uh, unfortunately, mine has a pretty yellowed casing. Now, for context, here's another rare cart that I have in the color that my Chinese cart is supposed to be. You can see quite a difference. So what's the solution here? Well, we could just pop this thing in a new shell, but that disregards the label. Um, we can try transferring the label, but label transfers can be extremely difficult. Uh, I've seen a few methods before, and I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I, I don't have very high confidence in them because they seem tremendously easy to mess up. Um, either the cart housing or the label or both. Uh, so I've come up with a few mes methods that I think I think work well enough. Um, one day, maybe I'll have the courage to try it on this cart, because if I destroy this label, I will be heartbroken. I mean, it's not, all things considered, it's not like this is Trip World or anything, um, Shantae. It's, it's a rare cart, but rare does not necessarily equate to value. Um, but that being said, finding these things in an English-speaking country with English search terms is nigh on impossible. And basically my choices are to stumble across them. So that's kind of how, how I got here. But anyway, I bought this one because I wanted it and the price was right. But, you know, that's, that's not the only circumstance. Sometimes you have carts that are in reasonable condition. Um, you know, if it's just the back that's messed up, swapping out the back is stupid easy, as is the case on this Kirby cart. But in the case of this Kirby cart, this is a cheap enough cart that I could just buy one in better condition and not have to deal with it. So two extremes there. Um, but here's a third situation. My Pokemon Silver cart that I bought a while back. Uh, now I have done a few videos on this cart in particular. Um, I think most of them ended up being YouTube shorts, but long story short, this price tag on it is what I actually paid, and you can see the date. I bought this in November 13 of 2021. Um, I did buy it the same day they put it out, but notice it says repro. This is not a reproduction cartridge. It just has a reproduction label on it, and I think this label looks like garbage. So since it's already peeling, I'm just going to finish that job. And uh, unfortunately, you can see the first pitfall when it comes to removing labels. They do that. They rip. Um, now, because this is a reproduction label, I honestly don't really care. Um, the only thing is, is it would have been a lot easier to remove this intact, but sometimes you don't have that option. Um, Removing a label from a game you don't care about is tremendously easy. Uh, rather, removing a label from a cart when you don't care about the label is tremendously easy. You just got to pick it off. And then once you've got most of it off, you can sit there with um, what your, your solvent of choice and finish the job to remove the rest of the adhesive and uh, sticker which in my case I will probably have to do, but might as well pull that off. I'm just going to keep scraping it. Yeah. 
And then from this point on, I just got to remove the rest of the adhesive with some solvents because when we put a new label on this, we want the label to sit nice and flat with no weird bulges. Might as well remove this too. Not only am I past the return window, I'm not returning it anyway. And if I'm being honest, the only reason I kept that on there in the first place was to flex on people. <sighs> but here we are. No need for that. I got my fun out of it. To finish removing the label, I'm going to use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on a cotton swab. Just saturate that. Run it over this stuff. Best opportunity to clean one of these things is when you have the label off because you can just take it and run it under warm water and soap. So keep in mind, if the water is too hot, it will warp and ruin the cartridge. And in the case of a game like Pokemon Silver, that would be a gosh darn tragedy because these cases are not replaceable. There are no aftermarkets and the only donors in this color are other Pokemon Silver games. So the original plan was to just get something custom printed um, some boutique custom label. Um, I was either going to do some art or commission some art and uh, just have a one-off label made. Um, but I came up with another solution that is not necessarily better, but at the very least it gets me content, so there's that. Um, but it also gives me a good excuse to walk through what I'm walking through right now. So now that we've got the label off, I can get a donor label. And my thoughts on the donor label are, yes, a custom boutique label would be pretty sweet, but I haven't done it yet. It's uh, February 16th as of filming this. Like I said, I bought this thing November 13th of last year, so it's been basically November, December, January, February. Three whole months, and I've done absolutely nothing as far as getting a label for this thing goes. And I've known it's needed a label since day one. So at this point, I'm going to cut my losses, and we're going to go a different route. So my plan here is to take a Japanese Pokemon Silver, which does come in a different color casing. The front is dark gray, and then the back of the casing is dark blue. Do I have one here? Do I have one? No, I don't, because of course I don't. I only have the front, but whatever. You can take my word for it or Google it. Uh, Japanese gold is the same thing, but reversed. So the front is dark blue, and then the back is this dark gray. So if you buy one of each, you can uh, swap the rear housings and then have a solid color if you want, but that's less official. Anyway, three options for removing a label intact uh, that I'm gonna go over. There are more options, but like I said, I don't necessarily like all of the ones out there. Is that the right one? No, we're gonna use this one. All right, so option number one, the easiest. It's exactly what I tried with that label, but a little bit more carefully. Um, I find it's easiest to do with a knife, holding it like this, gripping the the handle with my um, index and pinky ring, and then holding the blade with my thumb and uh, index ring finger and pinky, and then holding the thumb, the blade, with my index and middle finger. Jeez, um, I'm left-handed, of course, but righties can do the exact same thing, just reversed. Anyway. Um, on almost all OEM carts, if you look at the very, very edge, it's almost always curled up just a little bit. Now, if you want to preserve your carts for a long time, you know, make sure they're nice and safe and this 
little corner peel doesn't happen to you, it's always a good idea to just press them down a little bit. I'm not going to do that on this one because I don't want to make it more difficult on me, but I'm going to swap that one eventually too, so I will not do that one. But you can see my Kirby one is actually not affected by that, but just run your finger along the bottom of the label and make sure it's fully adhered down. Um, they're like that from the factory. They just don't get even pressure, and especially over the years, the edges start curling up. You can use that to your advantage, slip a knife under there, and then you have some leverage. Look at how much leverage I'm getting on this cart. But anyway, just slip your knife under there, and very, very slowly start working it up. We are using the knife as a solid, flat object, as a spatula, basically. I'm not using the blade whatsoever. Uh, the only thing I'm using the blade for is as a thin edge to slip the knife under the label, and then I'm squeezing the label with the blade and my thumb, and then peeling slowly. I have to reposition quite frequently, but it'll come up. But keep in mind, you have to go extremely slowly. If you go too fast, it will rip like I did that one. It's also worth noting that every single label is different, and I honestly did not expect to get this far with this method. This does not always work. Granted, it hasn't technically worked yet. And we don't want to keep going in the same direction. I want to work my way around the outside. Not only because it's easier, but because it'll give me more leverage if the label does start tearing. Or rather, it'll give me an, an alternate angle, approach angle. See in the middle where most of the adhesive is starting to stick to the front shell instead of the label? That is a sign that the label is about to start ripping. So I am going to keep circling around and just stick towards the edges. And see, Right there, that is exactly what I was afraid of. That's not adhesive, that's the paper backing of the label. So I cannot continue anymore in this direction. I have to circle back to this direction. Start coming at it. Probably easier if I swap hands. For the purposes of filming. Huh? Huh? All right, we're almost there. Alright, so before I finish this off entirely, I'm going to stick it back down where the adhesive is starting to peel up, and then pull it down again. And if I'm lucky, the adhesive will stick to the label. I'd recommend repeating that a few times, see how much adhesive you can get to stay on the label side instead of the cart side, but sometimes that doesn't work, so we'll just keep peeling. And there's that little spot that started tearing. Not a whole lot I can do about that, but we'll just leave it for now. And now I have a perfectly intact label that I could just stick down on another cart and move on. Or, um, well, yeah, stick down on another cart and move on. And stick down is exactly what I'm going to do. I don't recommend ever grabbing the back of these with your bare finger, like I'm doing right here. Do as I say, not as I do. Um, because it will weaken the adhesive and we 
should avoid weakening the adhesive as much as possible. Set that down. And if all goes well, we won't have to redo the adhesive, but all has not gone well. At least in this particular case, I will have to redo the adhesive. Or it could just be this cart material that it doesn't want to stick to, because this is a 3D print. A little bit of heat can help to reset the adhesive. Put that down before I hurt myself. But, eh? Eh? Yeah, it's not the best. But I can redo the adhesive, no problem. We'll just pull this off and then hit it with a little bit of uh, spray-on adhesive. And that should redo it. It's really not that sticky. But that was option one. Let's take a look at option number two. Option number two is the exact same thing, except with heat. Oh, no. Oh, I unplugged my hot air. Hang on. All right, I only have so many outlets. Forgot I unplugged the hot air to plug something else in. But I have my rework station set to about 250 degrees Celsius, and I am going to hold the cart with my fingers sticking out over the front, and I'm just gonna hit it with the hot air. And give it a give it its opportunity to heat up. I'm moving the hot air station back as my fingers get overheated. I'm using my fingers um, as a temperature probe, more or less. If it's too hot for my fingers, it's likely going to get too hot for the cart, and we do not want to overheat it. It's not the end of the world, but the shell will start deforming, and it could ruin the label. In this particular case, all we're after is the label. so. As long as we don't ruin that, who cares what happens to the shell, right? All right, once it has been sufficiently warmed, eh, give it a few minutes, probably a little bit longer than I'm doing here, but for the sake of the example, I'm trying not to dwell too long. And then just slip the knife under same as we did last time, except this time around with the added heat, it should be quite a bit easier. Though I did experience this on another cart entirely. Um, once I added heat, I found that the adhesive did not want to stick to the label whatsoever, and that it just peeled straight off the label. I don't know how... I don't know if that's a good thing necessarily, but even with the adhesive stuck to that other label, I have to re-adhesive that label. And that's probably going to be the case here too. but notice how much easier this is coming off. Again, every single cart is gonna be different. You can see it's starting to cool down. The adhesive is starting to stick to the label again. Oop, that's ripping a little bit. And ta-da, there is another label, successfully removed, intact. In this particular case, uh, it might be a good idea to get the back of the label cleaned up and get the rest of this adhesive removed. I don't know a safe way to do that. This is still paper at the end of the day. But it is what it is. The uh, third option is quite a bit more destructive I will show it at the end after we've exhausted all of the other options. Uh, instead of using spray-on adhesive, I just had what I thought was a pretty decent idea. I'm going to take the center cutout from a lens. 
Um, so for like the Game Boy lenses, uh, they have the pre-applied adhesive around the outer edges. There's usually a cutout in the center that they leave installed for you because, I mean, it's already cut. They can't really use it. But if they leave it installed, it serves as like a protector of the back and you're supposed to remove it before installing. I like saving them because it's a nice square of adhesive and note the size is perfect for what we want. And so in this case, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna peel off one side of this and just stick the label to it. This is probably not the best method, but believe me when I say I have hundreds of these Pokemon Silver labels, so I'm not really that concerned. And I'm just gonna keep squishing it down, make sure it is nice and even stuck down and I don't care that I'm getting my fingers all over this adhesive we're just gonna cut that off anyway and now comes the part where you need scissors and I can't find my paper scissors uh, all I have on hand are the uh, hardcore scissors so as long as I don't use the serrated portion I think I can still get away with it I'm just going to cut the edge of the adhesive off. And you can get little punches to do these corners, but if you're only doing onesies and twosies, a steady hand is all you need. And these scissors are sharp enough that I can just slide this. These are some ridiculous scissors. I cut a DS in half with these for shits and giggles. They are not the right tool for this particular job. He says, as he does a perfectly adequate job. Oh, I missed the edge a little bit. This is where nice sharp scissors come in handy. Should look like a perfectly normal label. And pro tip, you can use the adhesive to remove the adhesive. Or just go back and use the uh, cotton swab. That works too. And for those that care tremendously about this. These are those engineer uh, PH55 scissors. I'm sorry, I keep getting a reflection. There we go. They are absurdly hardcore, but not for paper. Using them on paper is kind of dumb. All right, and so now let us apply this to our recipient case by peeling off the backing.
Let me get it lined up reasonably well. I'm going to stick it down from the edges and work my way across. Make sure there's no boobles. There we go. A US copy of Pokemon Silver with a Japanese label, Noise and Toit. I've heard that the uh, spray on adhesive is a pretty good pretty good substitute. Um, and I don't know. This is a little bit thicker, but seems to work just fine. There's no clearance problems. Uh, let us try something a little bit toiter. I don't have anything a little bit toiter. I think that's the toitest of gold. Ta-da! But it's not about the game, it's about the label. And I said I'd mention our third option. So let's go through our third option. Now I have already done, of course, one label, two labels. Here's the third one. I've already done it. I'm not gonna show you guys how to do it because like I said, it's already done. Um, Go ahead and stay tuned. I'll go ahead and splice that footage in. Just keep in mind, I did not show the whole process. Um, once I got the label prepped for removal, I went ahead and removed it the exact same way I removed all the other labels with the knife, getting it and using it as leverage, getting it under there and uh, slowly removing it. Uh, but without further ado, here's a method that I came up with all on my own. All right, so the stove is on. We've got our uh, junk pot, as in uh, I don't use this for prepping food. Um, just got some tap water in there. Got the stove on low-ish. We're at three of ten, whatever the hell that means. And the water is about 130 F and climbing. Uh, it's climbing pretty slowly, so I think that should be pretty pretty good for our needs and I've got the donor cart just the front half of the shell double bagged jam that in there um, so temperature wise this is America getting Celsius thermometers is not exactly trivial um, we don't want the water to go over I think it is 70 Celsius. At that point, the ABS plastic will start degrading and it will make this so much more difficult. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold that under there, the whole thing in the bag. Um, do be sure to squeeze out as much air as you can, but keep in mind if you can squeeze out air, water can likely work its way in, so hence the double bag. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, just good enough. Um, I've used this method quite a few times. seems to work. Uh, if you go over 70 degrees Celsius, the ABS plastic will enter a transition phase where it will start deforming. It won't necessarily melt, but the cart itself will be unsalvageable. Um, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure what temperature we need to get to, to loosen the glue, but I believe about 50 to 60 degrees Celsius is the sweet spot. Any hotter than that, and you're just destroying the glue and the plastic for that matter. Uh, but the label itself will be more resilient to temperature than the shell. So if you don't care about the shell, then just crank it. Who cares about the temperature? We are at 140 Fahrenheit now. 
Ooh, and it's going down. Perfect. So I hit the proper setting. And yeah, we just let that steep for a few minutes. I keep pushing it under. It probably doesn't matter. But I just want to make sure the whole cart is nice and hot because we want it to absorb that heat and um, give the glue a nice opportunity to break down. Once it's, uh, I don't know, once, once it's been in there a few minutes, I'll pull it out, pull it out of the bag, and then we'll, uh, I'll rip it off. Alright, so it's been, it's been a couple minutes since I just stopped filming. I'm starting to see little bubbles inside of the bag. Um, hopefully that's not a problem, but that either means it's done and ready or I've ruined it, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but one thing, I don't know how well this is coming off on camera, but you can see a little bit of steam coming off the water. That's because we're right at the upper limit of our temperature range. Uh, any hotter and I'm going to start warping the plastic. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out now and pull the label off. And because I don't have a tripod set up in the kitchen, sorry. I'll have to cut back. Apparently this thing does support Celsius. I have no idea how it switched, but it just switched. Now it's in Celsius mode. The packaging said it only supported Fahrenheit. Even the... Even the markings on it say it only supports Fahrenheit. And yet here we are. Anyway, it was a success. And just a quick addendum, because it is worth mentioning. Um, if we get the water too hot, I, I gotta reiterate this. If we get the water too hot, it will destroy the housing. In my particular case, I don't care. Usually, if you're removing a label, it's not... You know, if you're removing a label, it's either because the label is garbage and you want to salvage the case, or the case is garbage and you want to salvage the label. So, destroying the shell, I find, isn't really that big of a deal. Especially when you consider that that boiling method that I just showed... I have had a 100% success rate with that. I can't say that about the other two methods I just showed. The, um, you know, just jam it in there and peel, no heat. That fails more often than not. Pokemon labels in particular are a little bit easier because they are these foil-backed, um, paper-based foil-backed labels. Um, they're a little bit sturdier than other labels. If I were doing that with my Kirby's Dreamland, I don't think I'd be able to peel that off intact. Um, heat, I would be in a much better scenario, but if you just boil the thing, well, I, I keep saying boil, but you don't actually want to bring the water to a boil. But if you just heat it up in the water, I find that works the best. The first few ones I tried, I totally destroyed the casing but the label was 100% intact. Uh, in fact, I, I know I said kind of the opposite in the video, um, but that was because the uh, phenomenon I experienced was not repeatable. But on one of the carts that I did, once I got it up to a certain temp, uh, of course, the front housing just started like, you know, it got, it, it got all wavy. It basically, you know, you, you could do this with it. But the label just peeled right off. Like, I, I stuck the knife in, and I kid you not, it was as easy as doing this. And the label came right off. Again, the cart shell was destroyed. And the next one I tried, that didn't happen. But it was a paper-based label like this Kirby's Dreamland. Uh, so, your mileage may vary. Uh, I hope this helps. I hope... Um, you're able to use this information in some way. If you're copying my methods and it works for you, I, I'm glad it helped. If not, please, this is this is not an exact science. I said I got 100% success rate with the water method, but it still comes down to feel. If you pull the label too fast, it will tear regardless of whatever method you use. Uh, I have seen some other YouTubers use... Um, chemical solvents to remove the labels. I know one of the more popular things to do is use uh, naphtha, I believe it is, uh, lighter fluid, basically. You just soak the top label in lighter fluid, and you, you just gotta keep like working it in and peel the label up little by little, and 
from what I've seen, that is a relatively foolproof method. But from what I've experienced, that's not necessarily the case. I have a Pokemon Yellow cart that I tried a similar method with, and it totally ruined the print on the label. I was very disappointed. Um, granted, the label was already pretty much ruined, so it wasn't the end of the world, but it was still kind of disappointing because there are no label donors. Like, the only way to get an intact label is to just buy a game with an intact label. You can get custom labels printed, no problem, but sometimes, uh, like in the case of Pokemon Silver, you can buy the Japanese cards for like a dollar, and that's cheaper than getting a custom label printed. And in this particular case, I think it works out pretty well, but not necessarily the best idea and won't always work for you. Um, ooh, Metroid is another one. Metroid 2, I think it is. Return of Samus. The Japanese label looks so much better than the US label, but it's hit and miss, I guess. It doesn't matter. Um, you know your game better than I'll know your game. Uh, just use your best judgment and uh, good luck. Thanks for watching. Catch you all next time. This video went entirely too smoothly, so I decided to boil another one. Let's check it out. In an attempt to show what I was talking about, I actually brought the water up to a boil for this one, and the plastic bags do start melting at that temperature, so they're not really reusable. See how they're sticking together? So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. Yes, it is hot. Uh, but, Note, despite that being in water, this is still nice and dry. It's a little flexible, but it's still very nice and hot. I fully expected it to be totally deformed. That was not the case. This is a paper-based non-foil label. And what do you know? I already started tearing. Might still be able to get away with it though. Oh, it's already tearing over here too. I think I need to start another corner. For the purpose of this example, I probably should have let it steep a little bit longer. I wanted to show you what a deformed cart looks like. Show you what happens when you go too far. Nope, that's starting to tear again. Got to be my worst one yet. Oh, that one's tearing too. We have one more chance. Oh, that one tore right off the bat. So yeah, this one's not coming off. Not intact anyway. You win some, you lose some. There goes my 100% uh, rate on the boil method. Oh, maybe I can salvage it. Hang on. This point though the cart is cooling down quite quickly. Plastic is not known for its heat retention. Huh? Huh? Maybe we're good once you have the edges up. Chances of success success go up quite significantly. Nope, 
there's another rip. Now we can't approach that from another angle. salvage this one. It's ripping from both sides. See right here starting to get paper stuck down and right here got quite a lot of paper stuck down. Plus I've already wrinkled the bejesus out of this thing. Hence why I haven't done that uh, fun pack cart yet, that foreign one. I'm terrified of this happening to it. Maybe I will have to try more of those chemical solvent methods. Yeah, but there you go. You win some, you lose some. What are you going to do?